What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Dosh. That's back with another video today. We're reacting to 11 NBA players that turn into superstars. Please show a like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Roll to 200 subscribers. Go subscribe to Austin Sweat as well. Let's get right into it. Today, we're looking at NBA players that are stars today, but didn't always start out that way. We have some guys yeah, like Luka Doncic and LeBron. Started out as a six man. That's one. But is that really terrible? Let's see. Hey, but let's talk about it. I got before the video start. Before he should get, really get started. I want to talk about what I want y'all to comment this. What's y'all definition of a superstar? Cause it's getting kind of bad. Like Darius Garland's a superstar now just cause he was an all star point guard this year. Uh, John ja Morant. I, as much as I like Ja, he's an all star, not a superstar just yet. A superstar is reserved to me for like those top tippity top players like LeBron, Luca. Maybe is a superstar. Steph Curry, KDs, your Giannis of the world, people like that. What's your definition of a superstar? Cause like like I said, Darius Garland is it, the best player on on your team. Team is not a superstar. Cause that means the NBA will have thirty superstars. No, it's like reserved for the top top players. So yeah, what's your definition of a superstar? James that were stars the second they stepped into the league but there's also others that weren't great players at first came into the league played pretty bad their first couple of seasons but then eventually bad. turned things around assistant. and turned into the superstars we know them as today so let's take a look and let's first start out with someone we haven't heard from in a while in Kawhi Leonard who we now know as one of the best He's players in the entire he league terrible, and maybe the best two-way player when healthy but when he came into the NBA he was coming off of two solid college years and was picked 15th overall and his scouting report had him as a cross between Luke Mabamute and Gerald Wallace that is crazy how he had played up until that point it also said that he was Wallace not very disciplined defensively, gambles far too often, and leaves his teammates susceptible to giving up easy. Who been doing this kind of report? What? Gambles too much defensively is definitely kind of crazy. Ask it. And that he lacks the polish and skill necessary to consistently operate on the wing, which are strong things to say about a player. Though coming into the league, he looked like a good prospect, but still had a lot of spots to work on in his game. And as a rookie, only averaged 7.9 points, 5 assists, and 1 rebound a game. But thanks to his play on both ends, he terrible. earned himself a starting spot for the Spurs and still finished in fourth in the rookie of the year voting, quickly starting to prove people wrong. Year two was another step in the right direction. Then from year three on, he was on a roll. Because that season, the Spurs went to the finals and Kawhi became their LeBron stopper. The next year he won the defensive player award, the following season he became a first time all-star and won another defensive player award, and in the year after that he averaged 25 points a game and became an official star in the NBA. At the time going through it, it seemed like it took Kawhi Leonard quite a while to become a superstar, but in the grand scheme of things looking back, it really didn't. It did take Jimmy Butler a little bit to turn things around though, because coming out of even high school he wasn't heavily recruited at all. So little that he ended up going to a- I know Jimmy Butler is a star, but- like I said, I feel like superstars deserve for those top players. Is Jimmy Butler a superstar? I feel like Kawhi, healthy Kawhi is definitely a superstar. I don't know, Jimmy Butler? Near college instead, and he went there for one year before moving to Marquette, where in year two, he averaged only five points and three rebounds a game off the bench. In year three, he became a starter, and in year four, played good enough to get drafted 30th overall in the NBA. But even his draft report coming into the league said, good all-around player, but lacks any one great skill. Fits the jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none mold, which is actually still pretty accurate to this day. But then it continued and also said that he was basically trash offensively. And coming into the league, honestly, that was pretty accurate. Too. The defense was always there, but in year one, he averaged eight minutes and two points a game off the bench. And it took him until year three to really even become a starter. And even when he did, he was known as a bad shooter and limited offensively. But then 2015 came around and when he finally broke out and won the most improved player award. Fixed his three point shot, became an all star, averaged 20 points a game, and became the new leader of the team while Derrick Rose was out with injury. And from then on out, he's really just been a star. And it was simply just a matter of winning also on his offensive he's a star, game to catch up with the elite like, defense that he always was capable of. And once it did, he came out as a real leader. As for the Milwaukee Bucks, their two best players today started out very far away from where they're actually at today. Chris Middleton's not a league, superstar. Getting compared to I don't know. Batum, and yeah, it that was take crazy. A ton of time to Giannis, great. But in his first year, he had to too. adjust. He still hadn't been playing basketball for a ton of time compared to everyone else. And oh yeah, he looked like this. He was six foot nine and 190 pounds. Came off the bench and averaged 6.8 points a game on bad shooting numbers. Well, he was always a solid prospect of the years, and no yeah, one could have expected him to develop the way he did. Growing two more inches and adding 50 pounds of muscle just off the court. 
court. And on the court, with that work ethic, his game quickly followed. But year four, he became a first time all star, putting up 23 points a game. Year six, a league MVP. Year seven, MVP and defensive player of the year. And year eight, an NBA champion. So he came into the league not really the best, but very quickly turned things around. But his teammate Chris Middleton took a little bit longer because he was a three star prospect in high school and wasn't even all that great of a prospect in college. So he was taken in the second round, 39th overall, and spent most of his rookie year in the G League. Yeah, only I was saying about six G League. points a game for the Pistons. Then for years, he slowly developed on the Bucks, but was always that guy that was an okay second option. Never made a huge impact on the team, and in the playoffs would always get eliminated. If early Chris off. Middleton was healthy, they would have beat Boston. It wasn't until his seventh year like, in the people NBA starting that he to say that. What is kind of make annoy me a little bit? People's like, oh, Milwaukee, the Suns and Milwaukee were pretenders. Chris Middleton wasn't healthy, man. His number two was unhealthy. I feel like it went to seven without his second best player. So if his if his second best player was there, faded over the hump and became an all star. But even then, it took until his finals performance in 2021 for most people to yeah, recognize. Yeah, really he was a true him. great player and not just same thing with Drew Holiday. Option. But speaking of second round picks, Draymond Green started out the same way. He had to spend all four years in college, like said, and even then, he was only taken 35th overall in the second round. And coming into the league, he played the full season off the bench and only averaged two points a game. I think he was always going to be a great defender and a super smart player, but he got really lucky getting drafted by the Golden State Warriors in what was the perfect situation for him. Even in his sophomore season, though, he was still. People were saying uh, Kawhi, when he first got drafted, they were saying the same thing about him, but he was only going to be a system player. I, it would have been interesting to see like if the Pacers didn't trade him, how nice he would have really been. And the only reason he got the starting spot in 2014 was because David Lee got injured in the preseason. But then Golden State played so good with Draymond as a starter that he made the all-defensive first team. They won 67 games and won the title that year. Even at that point, Draymond's game was far from complete. But like I said, he fit so well in with the I Warriors really thought system. The Warriors were but then in his year. fourth year, he put up a career-best 14 points a game. Started making all-star teams and helped them to a 73 Draymond ain't never put It was safe to say that him being in the starting NBA lineup and his like development were exactly time. what Golden like, State needed. Then seven. in year five, he teamed up with KD and won the defensive player of the year award really cementing himself as a star and really becoming the player he is today tobias harris was a guy that really came out of nowhere maybe it wasn't so surprising he ended up on the milwaukee bucks in his first year and apparently they didn't think much of him because he only played 11 minutes a game and averaged five points well then they still don't see much value in him so they trade him to the magic in year two who make him a full-time starter playing 36 minutes a game and he instantly jumps up to averaging 17 and 8 a pace that he's really stuck to for the rest of his career up until this point so he came into the league not so great but it wasn't even his fault he's not even a star so like, because I think that's what I'm saying. You just calling anybody a superstar? Like Tobias Harris, all star, fringe all star every year. So why is we calling him, this man a superstar? That's what I'm saying. This word right here. The superstar term, it gets thrown out After there by the way magic, he would have seen similar results for him in his rookie year. And it makes sense. He was a top 10 overall high school player and only played one year in college before going 19th overall. It's just really weird that he kind of plateaued that early in his career and just never got better. Someone who played like him early on usually goes on to become a star. Well, Tobias's game has transformed a ton, but the stats have stayed the same and he's never made an all-star team. Now, Paul George didn't come into the league like most superstars either. He's turned into one these days, but at first he was just in a bench role for the Pacers behind Danny Granger, yeah. only averaging seven. And three and one a game but it was always pretty easy to see that he was yeah, going to be a great player yeah, was, i mean his draft comparison was, was scotty pippen and it was wow pretty I did because not he know would that eventually turn into comparison. a version of that and it didn't even take that long to happen because already by year three he was averaging 17 points a game was the most improved player a first time all-star and in the postseason led his team to a game seven against the eventual champion miami heat team his time on the pacers and those postseasons made him a star but his time for the okc thunder and that 28 point per game season that he had while he was there uh, made MVP? him a superstar yeah, now he remains as one of the best uh, two-way players in the Canada. game even though the whole playoff p moniker or whatever has um a man's viewed as a um people like slander him a lot now but Paul George is definitely one of those players. Though he necessarily didn't start out that way. You know that James Harden has been one of the NBA's premier players for years, but of course didn't start out that way either. And obviously it wasn't his fault, but because the OKC Thunder made him come off the bench, he came into the league not so great and nothing compared to his true potential. It's surprising though to look back and realize that he only played in OKC for his first three years in the NBA. And by that was only three, a three years span? was the best six man, winning him the award and helping his team to the NBA Finals. Then in year four, his first ever time as a starter for the Rockets, he averages 20 Six, five, it was five. obvious that he was gonna become a um a star player. So like I don't know, 
it was kind of crazy to me at the time. That, that he had been ready to be a really starter all go. along. It was even that scary was to think that he was just getting started. Because five years later, he'd make it clear that he was by far one of the best scorers in the history of the game. But he led the league in scoring and won MVP. And it helped his case out even more by averaging 36 the next season. And that three-year stretch, including the one where he played point guard and averaged 29 and 11, leading the league in assists, was without a doubt the best of his career. Kyle Lowry was different, though, because it took him seven years to find yeah, a team Kyle that Lowry, actually wanted him. And it wasn't people actually forget how he, old that man is. Like, he played it. The Grizzlies, the Rockets, the Raptors. He didn't really get wasn't that so buzz great when he until played he for the Grizzlies the Rockets. or the Rockets. Over his first three seasons in the league, he only averaged eight points and three assists a game. Then he played for four years on the Rockets, but only slightly improved. And it wasn't until he arrived on the Toronto Raptors that he actually turned into a real solid player. I mean, it's very rare that you see a player in year nine become a first-time All Star. But honestly, I think it just comes down to finding the perfect situation for yeah, yourself. You gotta be that and some right people fit. just being slower learners than others. It took a long time for Lowry to become the shooter and passer that he is today. Then finally, we have Defense. both Pascal Siakam and Fred VanVleet. Starting first with Fred, we all know he infamously threw himself that draft party and didn't get drafted. And not only that, <laughs> he was a three-star recruit in high school and then had to go through all four years of college like a lot of guys in this video. But he eventually signed with the Raptors and just barely made the final cut for the team. And it's surprising that they kept him around because in year one, he averaged two points and point nine assists a game. They saw in year two, he picked up the pace with saw. eight and three a night. But then his third year came around and he started to break out. And it really happened during the postseason on their way to a championship. He had a couple of games where he even outplayed Kyle Lowry. So then they win the title and then of course, in the 19 and 20 regular season comes back around he had all the confidence and experience in the world and he's just been on a tear ever since and getting yeah, better, better is definitely nice. Season, with him finally making the all-star team this past year and as for siakam he shared a similar path he came into the league the same year as fred and played off the bench in his first two seasons and didn't get the starting job until their championship season and when he did he quickly became a most improved player candidate move, because he very course. quickly became quite every highlight option and that only amplified during the postseason there we go of every, just about every highlight go ahead that's standing exactly progressed the way everyone the thought he would but especially seeing how good he's gotten since he came into the league, he's now still definitely a near star for the Toronto Raptors. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm out. I definitely enjoyed this video, but like I said, this that superstar term is a little bit played out.